Yes, indeed. We are back. Great to be back with you here on the program that is dedicated to those teams that are trying to get it done away from home, usually. Uh, The teams that are less thought of, the teams that are somehow uh, regarded as not having the chance. We believe they will. It is Three Dog Thursday, both the video show and the podcast. Great to be back with you. I'm merely TJ Reeves. I've enlisted the help here on the Winning Cures Everything platforms and Winning Cures, uh, the YouTube page, et cetera, as well as Three Dog Thursday on podcast. I've enlisted the help of Tyler Jones, based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Tyler with Chat Sports and their NFL coverage. Tyler also with his own Jones Report uh, show and podcast that we love, among other uh, projects that he does. Tyler big in the Big 12 foot, footprint as well, a KU grad. He's been in and around Oklahoma, been in and around Dallas-Fort Worth. Love his Big 12 insight. Tyler, great to be with you. And we should tell the television audience that can see you uh, here on the Winning Cures platform, this ain't a bad uh, look right now, a scenic look, because tell them where you are right now as we tape the Three Dog Thursday show video and podcast if they can see you. Tell them where you are. So uh, credit to TJ for being very patient with me because uh, I had uh, uh, some stuff to get done here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. As literally just moments ago, I interviewed uh, one of the greatest drivers of all time, uh, Tony Stewart, actually. Oh, oh, the Tony Stewart. So, smoke, smoke, you and the, Smoke hanging out prior to Tony 3 Dog Thursday. Yes, so that is uh, – why my uh, my delay uh, happened uh, to get to this point, but we are here nonetheless. It's a beautiful night at a Texas Motor Speedway. I'm one of the last people here, and uh, I got to tell you, it was uh, super cool to talk to uh, Tony Stewart and uh, so much going on in the NASCAR playoffs, of course, right near the end of things. And uh, for him too, TJ, uh, Kevin Harvick, who will also be a Hall of Famer, one of his drivers, uh his swan song of sorts. He's only got about a few lace races left, about four races before he uh, joins Tony Stewart and retire. So that was cool to catch up with him and talk about that. Look at you. And again, uh, Tyler, many different uh, platforms, many different hats, hosts the uh, Let's Go Racing with David Starr podcast. He and Dominic Aragon do a great job with that podcast. David's a NASCAR and Inf- Xfinity Series driver. So we're mixing the NASCAR with the college football here as part of Three Dog Thursday, and I always love the insight of our different guests. So Tyler hanging out at the Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, Just bear with his internet. He's doing this at night as we release this on uh, Thursday. Uh, So we're doing the best that we can with with the beauty shot and with all of that. Again, if you're only hearing us on the Three Dog Thursday podcast on the audio, come find the video show, the winningcureseverything.com platforms, Winning Cures. Uh, everything, the YouTube page, the Twitch, the Twitter, all of that. Gary Seeger's pa- platform has been very good to us. Gary, obviously, back doing all of his college football preview stuff, uh, as well as his bet U.S. stuff. Still hasn't been able to be with me yet to make all of this work. That's why I keep going to my guests like Tyler Jones here in this case. Follow him at Tyler Jones Live to get all of his great content. Uh, without further delay, I want to get into the game you were at last week in the DFW area and then get to some underdogs. That's what we're here about, underdogs against the number in college football. But you were at OU Texas. What a scene. I believe that's the first time you've been there, or is it the second time you've been there? Second time you've been there. That is some scene. What a dramatic finish. OU ends up winning on the last minute touchdown, the last 30 seconds touchdown by Dylan Gabriel with the great drive in in the final seconds of the game. Just put it in perspective. You were there. You watched it. We love it on Three Dog Thursday because I was on the Sooners, Tyler, plus the six. We love that for the win, for the win outright and the cover. But you were there. Tell me more. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, great scene, great atmosphere to be there for what I think was one of the greatest college football games of all time. Uh, from start to finish, it was electric uh, of what we witnessed. And let, let me start out this way. A- as I know that the scene and all that was incredible and in all of its glory, uh, but I, I want to take a moment to kind of dispel something from the jump. Uh, I've done this on on my podcast, and uh, I want to make one thing clear as I've talked about this game the last couple of days. One theme that I keep hearing from the national media and Texas fans and the Texas folks is that, hey, Texas, they lost, but they were still the better team, and they will get Oklahoma back in the Big 12 championship game and prove that they were the better team, to which I say, 
you know, the, the argument that they make is, you know, Texas made a lot of mistakes, left a lot of points on the board. I, I counter that and say, hey, look, Oklahoma left about 20 points on the board themselves. And Oklahoma could have won that game by a lot more and made their own fair share of mistakes. It was a neutral side game. Uh, it's the middle of the season. You are who you are at this point. I think the better team won. I think Oklahoma is a better team than Texas. Uh, you know, Dylan Gabriel looks better than Quinn Ewers right now. And we the may have, defense. Uh, we lost you for uh, just Oklahoma's a second. A I don't think that was a fluke at all. Yeah, let me recap, too. We lost you for just a second, but we got the general point about how well Dillian Gabriel uh, Dylan Gabriel, excuse me, played uh, in the game, and we should my, my also. My point being that was it wasn't a fluke by Oklahoma, right? And they you, and you made that, team. and you made that. But Gabriel didn't get to play in the game, is where I was headed. He didn't get to play in the game because of the collarbone fracture last year, and they got destroyed. And man, what a difference! Including with the game on the line, and you're right that that game was as crazy a first quarter as you're ever going to see with fourth down gambles going for it, with blocked punt touchdown trick plays. Crazy things that kept happening, turnovers, uh, reviews, wild. And uh, then it kind of settled in, and it was a classic game, and OU got the win. So thank you for giving us a taste of that. So we're going to have some Big 12 underdog conversation. I, I think right away, uh, you're in the Big 12 footprint, and we saw uh, a, a Big 12 team maybe come of age a little bit last week, and you and I both like them for Three Dog Thursday purposes. This is a... Noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. on the body clocks of Iowa State playing at Cincinnati. You're going there, and I'm joining you. We're both going there on Cyclones. Tell me more about why you like this underdog with Iowa State getting five and a half playing Cincinnati. Um, I don't think either one of these teams were very good. Let's make that clear um, from the jump. But I was shocked to see Iowa State as such an underdog. This is a classic TJ Wrong team favored situation here. Uh, I think even though both teams aren't that good, I do believe that Iowa State is the better team and uh, their offense uh, is coming together. Remember, they lost several of their players uh, at the beginning of the year due to the gambling scandal. Eh, scandal. And, you know, their young quarterback uh, is starting to come into his own back uh, looks Looks pretty decent. Against and I'll Oklahoma pick it up from there. Ago. That's a that's a Tampa kid, Rocco Becht. That is the son of Anthony Becht, one of my good friends in broadcasting, former Buccaneer here in the Tampa Bay area. Anthony now is an XFL head coach. Anthony as well, uh, obviously an analyst with ESPN, et cetera. So you know Anthony pretty well if you've been paying attention to football the last 20 years. This is his son. He is developing as a redshirt freshman. They did, They had four interceptions against TCU last week. They were opportunistic. And are you ready for the stat on why I'm loving this even more? For Cincinnati, for Houston, for UCF, they are donut. They are bagel. They're 0-7 in the Big 12 so far. BYU, who you're going to talk about a little bit, has the only win, one win, of the four new members of the Big 12. They also have a loss. So the four new members at the moment going into play this week and this weekend – are one and eight to start the Big Twelve. Cincinnati is one of those winless teams. I just I like and, Iowa State here. And uh, another stat for you: that one win that BYU had was against Cincinnati. That's correct. That's correct. So none of the new members have won against Big Twelve traditional members. You know the the class of Big Twelve. So, with that said, like Iowa State. Matt Campbell, we know, is a good coach. I know he's, you know, his seat is warm and, you know, things have not gone the way that they would have liked the last couple of seasons and things are going well. But at the end of the day, like, I'm taking Matt Campbell over uh, Scott Satterfield every single day and twice on Sunday. I think that uh, the offense and the coaching makes the difference of why Iowa State not only covers but wins outright. Love it. And again, it's at Cincinnati. And again, it's a noon Eastern time game that you and I agree on out of the Big 12. So if we agree on that one, are you going right back to BYU and going uh, right back to them to try to get another win here in the Big 12? Again, they're the only one of that new group that has won one. 
Why do you, you are going that way. Why do you like the Cougars as a second underdog for you uh, for three dog Thursday here as they play TCU two thirty local time in Fort Worth. We just talked about TCU had the four interceptions last week in the loss to Iowa state. Now BYU comes in at four and one thoughts, Tyler on why you like the Cougars getting six points here. Uh, you know, I, I look at that, uh, that TCU team and they got a lot of problems. Uh, Chandler Morris is hurt. That actually might be an upgraded quarterback spot, not having Chandler Morris, but they continue to, st- to step in their own way and make silly mistakes. Meanwhile, BYU, their lone loss was to a good Kansas team. They played well offensively in that game. Slovis has looked good uh, as quarterback so far this season. Uh, you know him from his time in, at, uh, at at Pitt in, in USC. I, I think that BYU offense can cook, and we've seen their defense play relatively well at times too. It For me, TJ, it, it's kind of like riding the hot hand. I can't trust TCU. I feel more confident. And what I've seen out of BYU as of late, and their one loss wasn't a bad loss. And BYU, again, off a bye week here, their last game was that win, that primetime win on the Friday night against Cincinnati back two weeks ago. We were riding that on Three Dog Thursday. Uh, So we love the insight of our guest, Tyler Jones, with me. I'm merely TJ Reeves. Again, if you're seeing us on the Winning Cures Everything platform, thank you for finding us. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed on the Winning Cures platforms on YouTube, on Twitch, on Twitter, winningcureseverything.com. Gary Seeger's fantastic platform. That's where we are with the video show. If you're only hearing us, come find the video show. Check out the Texas Motor Speedway at night where Tyler Jones is joining us here on Three Dog Thursday. You can come see that on the video if you're only listening in podcast form through Apple, Spreaker, Spotify, uh, et cetera. I will join in uh, here with a second underdog for a game at 1230 Pacific, 330 Eastern time. And this is the battle of the Pac-12 early on with Oregon at number seven, Washington at number eight, both of them five and oh. Uh, Oregon getting three points here with Bo Nix, who seems like he's been playing college football since the 1980s. Uh, Nix's dad, Patrick Nix, obviously famous quarterback at Auburn. That's where Bo started, and he's now back uh, at Oregon for a third season. Uh, when last we saw the uh, the Ducks, they were pummeling Stanford. Back-to-back blowout wins over Stanford and Colorado. How about this stat, Tyler Jones? This is the first time that the Pac-12 – has had a game of two 5-0 and or better teams that were both ranked in the top 15, these, bo- these both ranked in the top 10, since 2007. Hello. I'm not sure what grade Tyler uh, Jones was in in school in 2007, but uh, goodness gracious, uh, it has been a while. You want another stat? Since that time, the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, in two, ga- in two teams that have at least a 5-0 and record, and both of them are in the top 15, they've had 24, 24 Jack Bauer of those matchups. The Pac-12, this is their first one since 07 in 16 years. So it's going to be built up a bunch. It's in Seattle. I just like Oregon on the road here. Any quick thought? Uh, Huskies have firepower. Michael Penix is a Tampa kid, big left-handed quarterback. Uh, Oregon, I think, maybe better defense with Dan Lanning. Any quick thought, Tyler, on my underdog? Uh, I like Washington in this game. I think Washington, you can make a case, might be the most complete team in all college football. They might be the best team in the country. Uh, I think that they win, and they win at home just fine. Penix, I think, is is very much a Heisman candidate. I would take him any day over Bo Nix, personally. I think Bo Nix is a fraud. Uh, I'm not trusting Bo Nix in a prime time, and, you know, in a big-time game by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Washington, you know, they're physical at the line of scrimmage. Their defense is solid. Uh, I like Washington at home. I think the Huskies uh, take care of business and win this one. Uh, I expect a close game to come down to the wire, but Washington, uh, I I think it shows how much a better team they are. It will be electric at Husky Stadium. That place can rock. And by the way, these two teams will move to the Big Ten. It'll get very weird to call this a Big Ten matchup in the future uh, when they are there. But I will take Oregon. Uh, Tyler and I on different sides on this. I will take Oregon plus the three as a Pac-12 doggy. Uh, And I've enjoyed some success with the Pac-12 doggies so far this year. Wolf, wolf. Oregon won of uh, of four teams through last week that are 5-0 
or have won their first five games and covered in all of them. Oregon at 5-0 and is covered in all five uh, meetings and matchups. So let's see what happens there. By the way, we're also brought to you in part by our friends at Ticket Smarter. Tyler knows all about Ticket Smarter and the Ticket Smarter mobile app. If you're looking to go to that Washington Oregon game, we're going to talk about USC Notre Dame and South Bend in a little bit. Any of these other games, we haven't talked about uh, Georgia or Alabama or Ohio State or uh, Michigan that are all in action. If you're looking to go to any of these college games that are taking place, Big 12, SEC, Big 10, et cetera, use Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Use the promo code WCE for winning cures everything. WCE10, take 10 bucks off a hundred dollar order with Ticket Smarter. And if you're if you're gonna get the expensive seats, you're gonna spend 300 bucks. You're obviously gonna spend 300 bucks on a pair of tickets to the better games. Use the promo code WCE20. Take 20 bucks off your order of $300 or more. Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app, the most competitive prices on the secondary market. Your purchase is guaranteed. Think smarter, ticket smarter. Promo code WCE10 to take 10 bucks off a hundred dollar order. WCE20 for 20 bucks off a three hundred dollar order. Get in those games with Ticket Smarter. Tyler, uh, let's go one more underdog each. Are you looking the way of the Southern Cal Trojans? You didn't like my Oregon underdog. USC at Notre Dame. Uh, this game in primetime. Notre Dame now some of the luster off after the losses. They've taken one to Ohio State. They've taken one to Louisville last week. Got beat decisively in the second half by Louisville. USC escaped triple overtime against Arizona. Why do you like the Trojans here as a dog? Uh, cause I've been let down one too many times by Notre Dame as of late. Um, you know, I, I really like Sam Hartman and, and that Notre Dame team, but they've disappointed me, uh, week after week. Uh, I think that Marcus Freeman's getting exposed. I don't think Marcus Freeman is that great of a head coach. USC comes in, you got the Heisman Trophy front runner, got the best offense in the country. I know their defense isn't very good here, but, uh, I think USC inserts their will and uh I, I don't see a way that Notre Dame slows down USC enough. I like USC to to win and for Caleb Williams to have a big day. Uh it might be a you know 45 40 game. I was but, gonna say they have not they have not stopped anybody, including a bad Arizona team that was winning a lot of that game last week. Right. USC's defense is what concerns me in this one. Obviously it doesn't concern you that much. No, no, it, it, it doesn't concern me because, I mean, look at Notre Dame last week. They weren't able to stop Louisville. Um, you know, that's what I look at. Like, is Louisville that great of a team? If you had problems slowing down Louisville, I can't imagine the issues you're going to have trying to slow down USC. True. Explosive bunch. Let's see if Lincoln Riley's team can get the victory uh, in this one. Tyler will take gladly the three and a half with USC in this matchup. Prime time on NBC. Look out for Notre Dame and Southern Cal. My final underdog, I will also go Saturday night. This one not far from where you are in the DFW area to the south in San Antonio. Give me the UAB Blazers of Trent Dilfer. Yes, the former Super Bowl winning quarterback of the Ravens, the former quarterback, former number one pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is now the UAB coach, Alabama-Birmingham. They go into UTSA, Texas-San Antonio, who's been good but the Roadrunners may be vulnerable here. UAB getting nine and a half. They wiped out South Florida out of Tampa, USF. That's Mrs. Reeves' school, Tyler Jones. Beat them badly last week in Birmingham. UAB also got the cover as a 40-plus point underdog against Georgia. They were winning in the game at Tulane. They didn't get a cover as the underdog at Tulane, but they were winning late in the first half against Tulane. I just I like their chances here in this matchup with Texas San Antonio, and they've got what the former Baylor uh, quarterback, the former Baylor transfer uh, that is involved in this game, uh, going up against Texas San Antonio and Frank Harris. So I, I, and that that transfer threw for 350 yards and four touchdowns last week. Uh, Jared Zeno, the former Baylor quarterback, and he's a San Antonio kid. Tyler, coming back to San Antonio to play the Roadrunners in a conference game now, UAB and Texas San Antonio in the same conference now in uh, in the American Athletic Conference. Any thoughts here? I get nine and a half with the Blazers on the road. One final thought here for Three Dog Thursday? Nine and a half. Hey, that's a lot of points that you got to work with. Uh, I like that. Uh, UAB, going to be interesting. The post-Bill Clark era, bringing in Trent Dilfer. 
I know that he's uh, been known to have a, a little bit of an attitude. I, I saw him uh, cussing out a player on the sidelines right. uh, a few days ago and everything. But uh, that, to me, is, is fascinating. Uh, you know, in, in that game, see what UAB is going to be able to do. And uh, I would expect uh, a lot of points. I don't know what the over-under is in that game, TJ, but uh, I would think that uh, the over probably hits. We're looking at 67 and a half is the number that I see. And again, UAB has not been good defensively. I mean, USF put 35 on them. Georgia got to 49. Uh, even Louisiana Lafayette got to 40 on them as well earlier in the year. So this may be a track meet. I just love the nine and a half points. Saturday night, seven local time in San Antonio, eight Eastern time. Adjust your time zone accordingly for that. Okay. So with that, let's recap the underdogs. Tyler and I agree on Iowa State. And we're getting five and a half early game at Cincinnati, if not to outright win. Tyler then goes with BYU, sticks with another Big 12 underdog, getting six in the matchup with Texas Christian with TCU. I'll take Oregon in the game with Washington, uh, getting three. I believe the Ducks can win this one on the road in the Pac-12. Huge showdown in the Pac-12. And then the nighttime games, Tyler goes Southern Cal in the traditional uh, rivalry. So many Heisman Trophy winners for both of these schools. USC at Notre Dame. Tyler gets three and a half. He'll take the Trojans, and I'll take, as we just said, the UAB Blazers and nine and a half against Texas San Antonio. Anything else in closing? I know you got to be careful. They're going to turn the lights off literally at Texas Motor Speedway coming up. We don't want that to happen. Uh, anything else in closing, Tyler Jones here on Three Dog Thursday? Uh, I got to say, you know, looking at this week, uh, I'm very curious about my Kansas Jayhawks taking on Oklahoma State of how they will hold up with no Jalen Daniels and Oklahoma State coming off an impressive win last week. Can can we'll see if Kansas can hang in there. That's for sure. All right, no doubt. And Tyler may be a little frozen yeah, up there yeah. as we do the show live here, uh, live the tape on the Winning oh, Cures I'm Everything sorry. platforms. That's okay. We got the bulk of the point about Kansas and Oklahoma State. And then, as I mentioned uh, as well, uh, we've got Georgia, interesting, Alabama, Michigan, and Ohio State all playing early, all playing at the same time at noon Eastern time for the different matchups. They're all heavily favored. Georgia at Vanderbilt, Michigan hosting Indiana, Ohio State at Purdue, Alabama hosting Arkansas. They're all at least 16-point favorites. We'll yeah, see what happens on that. Tyler Jones, thank you. Great stuff. Again, we'll follow him at Tyler Jones Live. The Jones Report is the podcast, also with Chat Sports. Thank you, my friend, on Three Dog Thursday. I appreciate it. There we go. There is Thanks, Tyler Jason. Jones. Have a great one uh, from the Texas Motor Speedway. It's not every day that I get a guest that's been interviewing Tony Stewart, among others, uh, in, the, in the NASCAR world. I'm merely TJ Reeves. Thank you for finding us on the Winning Cures Everything platforms with my man Gary Seegers, winningcureseverything.com, podcast form for Three Dog Thursday. For now, good luck with the underdogs. We love it on Three Dog Thursday.